honor to be here. And I'd like to uh, thank everybody who made this possible. <laughs> Say some things in conjunction with things that have already been said. I want to talk theoretically and politically. <clears throat> I want to talk about something that needs to be done that's we're not making any progress, not only environmentally, but politically. Politically, I want to talk about lines politics and need to unite the left and the animal liberation movement and the earth liberation movements. Uh, I just want you to know before I speak, I come from the left. My background's from the left. And I evolved into an animal liberationist or what I'll call a total liberationist. So when I am critical of the left, I know what I'm talking about. When I'm critical of the vegan community, I know what I'm talking about from experience and uh, from reading and theory. So I want to say first that um, the good news is we're winning many battles. Battles for ecology, for peace, for democracy, for liberation, for rights of all beings on the planet. But we're losing the war. We're losing the war against corporate capital, against greed, against the domination of the IMF, against the laws of species, linguistically, culturally, biologically. We're losing the war, and we're losing ground. So we have to recognize this, that whatever we're doing, it, we're not doing enough. We've had three or four decades of strong environmental and animal liberation movement activity. The movement for the human rights and social justice, of course, goes back centuries. And yet we're losing ground. So this means either we're doing something completely wrong, or we've got some good ideas and we need to radicalize everything we're thinking and everything we're doing. Look at the signs of ecological distress. They're everywhere. This planet is screaming. It's screaming for liberation. You can look at um, shrinking forests, the depleted fisheries, the vanishing wilderness, the rising sea levels, and you can see that the planet is telling us that our existence here is wrong, that we are incompatible with the planetary ecology. The planet is telling us to change or get off, and it will eliminate us if it has to. And I think we're seeing the first signs of extreme reaction to the human invasion of this planet, the complete colonization of this planet. There are two important things we need to focus on that are signs that are utterly unique about this moment we're living in now. It's utterly unique. We can never forget this. Number one is the issue of, of climate change. This is widely debated, but I think the facts are, are in. And I prefer to err on the side of safety. We, are in a, we have gone from taking over local ecosystems and collapsing them and moving on to different ones and to larger ones, to having taken over the planetary ecosystems such that the entire ecology is now in crisis and is collapsing. There's no place left, no place else left to go. This is the six, so we're in the era of global warming, of, of planetary climate change. This is utterly unique. We began to speak about this in the 60s and 70s a little bit. It was, it was a, more of a hypothesis than a reality. Now this is our lived state. This is what we are handing down to our successors. Second, we need to realize that we are in the sixth species extinction crisis in the history of this planet. The sixth. There have been five before. They have all been caused by natural events, such as the crashing of a meteor into the Gulf of Mexico. Well, we are this meteor. And we keep crashing and crashing and crashing, and the planet has no chance now to, to heal. So we are in the sixth species extinction crisis in the history of the planet right now. When was the last one, you might ask? 65 million years ago, when the dinosaurs were eliminated from, this, from, the, from the planet and 50% of the species were, were gone because of a meteoric strike 65 million years ago. That's how unique this area is right now. We should never forget it. Now, so I think uh, it's safe to say that uh, the global capitalized world is inherently destructive. The system cannot be humanized, it cannot be civilized, it cannot be made green friendly. I think it has to be transcended at all levels through revolutionary thinking and revolutionary politics. It cannot be reformed, it can only be revolutionized. This is our only chance, and if this seems impossible, then our future is impossible. 
There's been growing awareness in the last three decades that we need to unite political movements to, to make the changes necessary to overcome this catastrophic situation that we're in. And we've seen a lot of activity uniting social movements and green movements and the Zapatistas and Earth First alliances and uh, with something uh, called uh, the environmental justice movement in the U.S. There's been a lot of activity uniting social ecology movements together, human rights and, and, and the rights of nature. But the left, the humanist left, has apparently ignored an obvious fact that there is a new liberation movement on this planet today. And its insights and its politics have to be in integrated into the social and ecological movements. And that movement is the animal liberation movement. And until we integrate these three movements together, the movement for human rights, animal rights, and, and the rights of nature, we have nothing. And it's no movement I want to be a part of. We have to fight for it all. We don't fight for anything. It will all come together. It all hangs together. It all, far, it all fall apart as one. So uh, we need to... Um, we need to bring these two movements together, or these three movements together. And there's been very little activity about this uh, so far. And I feel like uh, I'm trying to bring together a warring family that hates each other and they don't, want to, they don't want to come together when I talk about the social liberation movements and the animal liberation movements. But I know that unless these movements come together, we have no chance. I know this. And this is something I deeply believe in. So um, I think that the left, has to acknowledge the validity of the animal liberation movement for two reasons. One, the moral reason. You cannot talk about peace and justice. You cannot pretend to have compassion. You cannot uh, have any pretense to enlightenment if you think that the Holocaust of life on this planet right now is of such trivial significance that you can eat animals as you talk about peace. That we can murder animals daily in our lives and pretend that we're civilized and enlightened. This has to stop. This hypocrisy, this pretension. I say this 30 years as a vegetarian, 20 years as a vegan. We cannot talk about rights and ecology. We cannot talk about peace and nonviolence so long as our daily lives are predicated upon the extermination of species or the mass manufacturing of suffering. This has to end. It must become consistent and our values and our thinking in our lives it must become part of the solution and not a part of the problem. So the left has to recognize this morally and has to recognize this practically, that we must come together in new forms of alliances. So what I've been calling for are new visions, new alliances, new kinds of politics, new forms of dialogues that should have never been attempted to bring the left together and the animal liberation movement together so that the left stops mocking and trivializing these issues and the animal liberation movement which is the animal welfare movement, the animal rights movement, and the radical liberation movement itself. Such that they stop pretending to be a single issue. They stop pretending that we can liberate animals without liberating humans, without liberating Earth, the Earth at the same time. So each movement has a problem. Just speaking of the human liberation movement and the animal liberation movement. But the solutions to their problems are by coming together and forging alliances and merging uh, their various uh, insights and uh, the contributions of their politics. So I talk about a politics of total liberation. And by total liberation, I don't mean we become totally free someday. I imagine all kinds of problems will exist in a revolutionary society. I talk about total liberation in the sense that the earth, animal, and human liberation movements need to come together. We need to make one systemic fight against oppression the enemy on the planet is oppression, it's not just capital, it's oppression. Racism, sexism, homophobia, speciesism, all these things, they, I want to argue today, they stem from some, some basic cores, some flaws in human thinking and, and, and human society that uh, I believe that we can change.